Hey, this is Russ. Got another bike to show you. Take a look at this one. Yeah, this is the Magicycle Ocelot Pro. And I've had this bike for a while. I just haven't had a chance to play with it until now. Yeah, so we're gonna do a quick, uh, quick once over on this bike. So yeah, this is a true step through model. Show you all the goodies here. That's a sharp looking bike. I'll tell you, a lot of the manufacturers now are coming up with really nice looking bikes. Let's look at the front here. Yeah, this is a nice bike. So what does it have? Well, 52 volt battery, 20 amp hours. This is a big battery. This is why the down tube here is so large. But um, put a key in here. There's a little switch in the bottom here. You flip this, battery comes out, drops out from the bottom here. You can charge it right here too on this side. Flip that open, you have to charge right there, or take the battery out and charge it inside the home. The front has the ability to add a basket. I will, I will plan to add a basket as soon as I get one from Magicycle. I like having my baskets. Front headlight. Rear tail light. Let's, uh, let's turn on the light here. So let me see if I can do this. This light will light up, and then if you pull on the um, the brakes, it'll light up brighter. It's very bright out here. Whenever I do these reviews, it's always very bright, hard to see everything. The bike comes out at class two operations, which means it's set for 20 miles per hour fully assisted with the pedal or with the throttle, but you can unlock that, turn it into a class three if you like, which is what I did. Class three will bring you to 28 miles per hour. Brakes are made by Tektro. These are full hydraulic brakes. Works very well. Yeah, so well that you could even do a single finger and pull it and stop your, bi your bike. <laughs> It's kind of hard to see in the bright sunlight here right now, but uh, I'm going to do another video where we're going to show you how to program the, uh, the bike so you can actually um, change this from anywhere from, oh, say five levels of, a power, of pedal assist all the way up to nine levels. I've actually changed mine to nine. I like to have some in-between um, ability so it doesn't, uh, doesn't give you too much at one time. Magicycle is well known to be very powerful. And um, if this is your first time riding an e-bike, you will want to lower that before you even start. The pedal assist level one is already at 40%. Level two is at 50% of full power. So I think it's a little much to start. I, I even put a slight delay. You can actually delay it a little bit. So that's how I opt to do it. And I, I did it immediately to this bike after checking it out a little bit to see if it does in fact what I thought it was gonna do. And it did, of course. Uh, that's what Magicycle is known for, <laughs> very powerful. So I, I, I lowered it down a tad. I think it's actually uh, a little bit simpler and easier to will, uh, work with. The hydraulic brakes uh, have 180 millimeter rotors on there. This bike stops real easy. There's, there's no problem, there's no squeaking or anything. And everything was, was, was good. The, uh, the saddle that comes with it is actually a pretty nice saddle. It's got a good cush to it. So if you don't want to change it out, you could just leave this if you want. I will probably change it out because I'm used to another saddle. But um, as a stock saddle, I would say it's a pretty good saddle. The rack does come with the bike. All right, It's not an option, it's already there. I think most of these type of bikes really benefit from having a rear rack. 
I mean, if you want to bring things with you, you have to have something, right? I go so far as putting a front basket on all the mines. As long as the, the bike comes with an option to do it, I usually do it. And I carry a lot of things on there. Now down here, what looks like a mid-drive, it is not a mid-drive. It is a 750 watt hub motor, okay? What's in there is probably the uh, controller, more than likely. So it's 750 watts, but it peaks out a lot higher than that. This thing goes really fast. The derailleur is the Shimano Altus. Shimano freewheel as well. And of course the gear shifter is the standard Shimano shifter that we've seen on many bikes now. The bell is a standard bell. <laughs> I will probably change that out. <laughs> I have some bells that I bought from China for like $1.80 per bell. <laughs> Low profile, rings real long. Yeah, I'm going to change it out. Uh, most bikes give you those bells that we just saw there. It uh, seems to be standard stuff now. The tires are unbranded. I don't see any brand name on it, but it has a very aggressive uh, tread pattern. It reminds me a lot of the, uh, the Kenda but it's, it's very deep. One of my uh, viewers said that it roars like a lion. <laughs> well, it's, it's about as loud as the others that I've had. I don't think it's any louder or anything like that. It's just the way they are. Overall, I think uh, it's, a, it's a good looking bike. It seems to be made very well. Um, yeah, it's got uh, 95 or 96 newton meters of torque. So it's got a lot of torque. And uh, some reports from some, uh, some YouTubers have already said that they've gotten just under 30 miles per hour on this. I took it for a ride here and I was able to get uh, 28. It is set for 28 and that's what I got was 28. Now again, like I said, I am a heavier rider. Um, but on level ground I was doing 28 and it's it stopped assisting at 28, which puts it at class three. But unlike class three, you can throttle it to 28. Class three should typically be pedal assisted to 28 miles per hour. Now, if you don't use the throttle and you pedal it, yeah, you'll get 28. You could take the throttle off if you wanted to. I don't see anyone doing that, but you could. And then it'll be truly a class three bike at that point. Yeah, overall, I think it's a nice bike. We're going to take it out for a ride, see how it does. I'm going to take it over the hill to see if the hill test does anything to it. We'll see if it's king of the hill or not. I think the Magicycle Cruiser will give it a run for the money. That bike goes over that hill like crazy. And that's not even the pro version. So I'm, I'm curious what the pro version would do. But yeah, this is a nice bike. They have some sale prices on it too. Let me, let me check my phone here. Let me see what... Uh, what they have for prices here. $2,199 on sale right now for $1989. $1989. So yeah, just under $2,000, but uh, well worth it. Good looking bike, lots of power. Let's take it out on the road. Let's see how well it does. Get back to you in a second. All right, so let's see how the uh, Ocelot Pro does out on the road. Now, I have not made any modifications to the bike as far as adding things that I usually add. I usually add a thumb throttle to the half twist throttle. I usually add a water bottle cage. There's no provisions for adding a water bottle cage here. I think what I'll do is once the front basket shows up for the bike, I'll, uh, I'll attach my front my uh, water bottle to the front basket as I usually do. I didn't change the bell out. <laughs> I will probably change that out to my favorite bell. I did not add a rear view mirror yet either. So everything on the, uh, the bike is stock. But I did make some modifications to the, to the menu of the bike. Now the menu on this bike is very similar to the menu that is on the uh, the Magicycle Cruiser. So if you know how to use that menu, you know how to use this menu. <laughs> it's really the same thing. 
So what I did is I took it from the levels of assist that it had and I moved it to nine levels of assist. I went from uh, one through nine. And the reason I did that is because I wanted some in-between power levels. I also started out at a lower level. I'll do it on, a, on another video. I'll show you how I made the modifications in the menu. And I'll show you my settings at that time as well. But today we're just testing out the bike to see how well it does, get some impressions of the performance of the Ocelot Pro. Now this bike has been long awaited. Many people have been waiting for months to get this bike. It was announced way early in the year and it just came out within the last couple of weeks. Now I've had this bike for a while now, but I have not had a chance to ride it until, uh, until now. So I've been working on other reviews for Magicycle as well as other companies. So if you haven't seen the reviews on the the new uh, commuter bike or the new Jaguar Rundi step-through um, folding bike, take a look at that. Jaguar Rundi is actually really nice. <laughs> and I really like the commuter bike too. It's a, it's a change of pace essentially. It's a belt-driven bike. Single-speed belt-driven bike that goes 20 miles per hour. It's, it's pretty nice. Feels like a regular bike actually. So I think the first thing we always try to do is we try to get onto the, um, the hill test, right? We want to see how well the bike does over the hill. Now I did unlock this bike to a, um, to a faster level than the class two level. Class two is what, how it's shipped. It's it shipped at a limited speed of 20 miles per hour. I unlocked it to 28, making it a class three, at least in terms of uh, miles per hour. And uh, the way we do the hill test typically is we, we will throttle up and uh, see how well it does on its own power going over the hill. Now this bike also has cruise control just like the Jaguar Rundi has. I'm, I'm, I'm not pedaling, <laughs> I'm just cruise controlling right now. So what you do is if you hold the throttle to the speed level that you prefer, hold it for at least eight seconds, it will remember that speed and kick in the uh, cruise control. So right now I'm running about eh, just under 12 miles per hour if I let go. Morning. We run at uh, 12 miles per hour. Well, 11.5, I guess, is where I was, give or take. We're going up and down little hills here, so it's going to go up and down a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm not pedaling, I'm not throttling, it's doing its own thing. I kind of like that because that way you don't have to worry about um, uh, thinking about pedaling, you don't have to think about holding down the throttle and, s and maintaining a consistent speed. You could just let the bike do its own thing. <laughs> kind of nice. And to cancel it out, of course, all you have to do, uh, hit the brakes and that'll cancel it out. Good morning. Hit the brakes or, or pedal forward. Now you can pedal backwards, do a back pedaling, and that will not affect the, uh, the cruise control. Now the reason that's kind of important is because, um, good morning, if you, uh, if you're, let's say you're holding your leg in a certain position while it's, it's doing its cruise control thing, you get tired keeping your leg in that position, all you have to do is backpedal it to a different position. It won't cancel out the cruise control. So that's the little secret for you right there. Now, I would recommend that you do what, like I do. If, if you've just gotten your bike, um, first thing I would say you should do is change change the uh, assist levels. <laughs> I mean, um, in typical Magicycle fashion, first level of pedal assist is already at 40%. That'll jolt you like you won't believe. <laughs> I mean, people have been known to, to be surprised at that first level of uh, assist, okay? 
Uh, you want to lower that down a little bit. I think I have mine down at like 23, something like that. And then there's an option too to uh, slow the response of the of the assist. So in other words, the minute you hit the uh, the throttle or the minute you touch the pedal, it won't start up immediately. It'll have a very slight delay before it starts up. Now the reason I do that is because again, I don't want to be surprised when I touch the throttle or when I touch the pedal. So I'm willing to take a slight delay in order for that to happen. Yeah, the Canadian geese are out. I make fun of the geese because they, they are not afraid. They are not afraid of people. You come right up to them, they don't care less. They could be aggressive as well. <laughs> All right. So we're getting closer to the, uh, the hill. Now I purposely uh, did not add all the things I typically do on the bike. I, I wanted you guys to see what the bike looked like from, from the start as you get it. Um, and then after we do uh, this particular review, I'll probably add all the things that I typically would add. The thumb throttle will be added. The seat is actually fairly comfortable. It's not, uh, it's not that bad. It's got a little bit of cush to it. So uh, you could just leave the seat at the way it is and, and not worry about it. But um, I typically add my own. Um, I, I bought a number of these um, replacement saddles and I'm used to the feel of it so I, I will more than likely eventually change it out to that but I wanted to at least give it a try um, with the with the stock saddle and I'd say it's it's actually it's not bad it's it's acceptable Overall, I would say the ride is very smooth on this bike. Um, I'm kind of used to it already. The gears shift very well. It's a standard uh, Shimano shifter. It's, it's basically the, the uh, derailers we're all used to. No real surprises here. What the surprise is, is the torque on this motor I believe is 96 newton meters, which makes it 10 newton meters more than the Magicycle Cruiser. Now the Cruiser's got updated too. As you know, there's a Cruiser Pro out there now. And the Cruiser Pro also has the same amount of torque, 96 newton meters. So 95 or 96? Well, whatever, I'll put it on a graphic. <laughs> I always forget. All right, once we pass this uh, bridge, we're going to full throttle. Now, if there's anybody that's there, we'll have to cancel out, but if there's nobody there, we're gonna go full and we'll see how we do. All right, so here we go. All right, full throttle. It's going to 21 miles an hour. 20.8, 2023, 18.3, 17, 16.4, 15.4, 14.4, 13.3, 13.3. <laughs> Not bad, but we hit like 14 something last time on the, uh, on the cruiser. So it was actually a little bit less than I thought it would be. I was kind of expecting this thing would hit 14. So, <laughs> based on that, I would tell you that the, uh, the cruiser still is king of the hill. I've gotten 14 something on the cruiser in the past. I mean, this, this is still pretty high up there. You're talking 13, what was it, what did they say? 13.3, 13.4, something like that. That probably puts it in number two position, something like that. But based on the, uh, the torque specifications, I tend to think the cruiser still is doing pretty good. Yeah. We should do that again. <laughs> should we do it again? Yeah, let's do it again. I'm going to go back. We don't do that that often. Let's do it.
Let's try it one more time. I'm gonna go back and then I'll swing back around. We'll try it again. We'll see if this, if we can beat that number or if it was just a fluke thing. The thing is, is as you round the corner of these turns, if you're going like 20 something miles per hour, that's a little scary. <laughs> I may have let up a little bit, I don't know. Let's double check it. I feel more comfortable with the thumb throttle too. I feel like, I, uh, like I'm able to uh, control the, the speed better than, than twisting the throttles. But let's do it again. That'll be a first. We've never done it twice before. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go down the hill now. <laughs> so, uh, ride the brake. Yeah, it's because there's a curve right here. It makes it a little scary make, taking this curve at 20 something miles an hour. But again, it usually has dropped a little bit by that time. So that's why the, uh, the numbers will decrease as we go up the hill. But I usually start the throttle right at around the bridge. So we'll just stop here at the bridge and then we'll take it. And we'll see how well we do. All right, let's turn around. All right, one more time. Hopefully nobody's there. We're gonna throttle fully at this point. Full throttle. We're hopefully not gonna let up. I think I did let up a little bit uh, as I rounded that curve. But we know there's nobody really there. So let's take it. 18.8, 17.6, 16.3, 15, 14, 13, 13.1, 13. Yeah, it kind of confirms it's not the king of the hill. 13. So far, the king of the hill still remains. Magic Cycle Cruiser. <laughs> I wonder what the Cruiser Pro would do. Cruiser Pro supposedly has a little bit more torque than the standard Cruiser, but my standard Cruiser broke 14 miles per hour going over the top. All right, now reports have come in too from other uh, YouTubers who have had the Ocelot Pro and have been playing with it longer than I have. I mean, I kind of got mines around the same time they did too. They, I think they beat me out by a couple of days because I'm in the Midwest, some of those guys may be in the West Coast, I don't know. But um, reports have come in that they are getting close to 30 miles per hour for um, top speed. I have to take it on the road to check that. I'm debating where I should go to do that. I don't want to take it at the three mile path and try to go 30 miles an hour there, that wouldn't be safe. On your left. <laughs> the dog decided to lay down. <laughs> All right, I think what we'll do to test this out, we'll take it to the uh, three mile path since we're already halfway down there anyway. And then I'll come off and go on to the street levels. On your left, thank you. I don't think he knew which way to go. <laughs> now this street over here will be too dangerous to do it on. So we will bypass this one. We'll go off to the three mile path and we'll get off the three mile path. Yeah, the riding position is pretty good. Um, as I said in the past, I usually adjust my saddle so that I have very good leg extension. 
you know, your good leg extension is almost perfectly uh, straight, but not quite. So you should have a slight bend in your knee. So that puts the saddle quite up there. And uh, with these uh, BMX styled, uh, let's see which way we're we going here. I think we gotta turn this way. With these BMX styled handlebars, we're in good uh, upright type position. I'm not leaning forward or anything like that. We'll have to wait our turn here. Being that this is a true step-through bottle, getting on and off the bike is easy, but once you get off the bike, there's nothing holding it in place. On a step-over model, you have that, that center bar holds it between your legs so you can let go, but on a step-through model, you have to hold on to the handlebar, otherwise the bike's gonna fall over. I think that's the one uh, disadvantage I see to step-through models. All right, and of course we wait for left turning people, make sure nobody's right turning into us. I always look at the, uh, the car next to me just to see if he's going straight or he's turning. Well, it is getting colder out here. Um, temperature is about 64 degrees outside. I am wearing long pants, wearing a long sleeve shirt, as well as a sweatshirt. Eventually, I'll be wearing uh, full-sized uh, gloves, too. <laughs> I remember last year, as it started getting colder, I had to do that. And then I started wearing a, a knit cap underneath my helmet just to keep myself warmer. If you can keep your head warm, you'll feel warmer overall. So um, a thin knit cap underneath makes a world of difference when you're, uh, when you're riding in the cold weather. We're not yet at that point, so I just have a regular helmet on. I have my Xneedo helmet, and I have the lights blinking on it as well. All right, we're going to, uh, we're gonna throttle up here. We're gonna go up this hill. We'll see how well it does. And again, this has been unlocked to, uh, to a maximum of 28 miles per hour. So this should be no problem for this to take. So we're doing 22 miles an hour right now, going up the hill. <laughs> yeah, that was no problem. <laughs> that was no problem at all. So the hardest hill that we go up still comes into number two position, beaten out only by the Magic Cycle Cruiser. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. So who's gonna end up with this uh, Ocelot Pro? Well, my wife has her eye on it. <laughs> I think she's gonna end up taking it. Um, I'll still be taking it on rides as well. She doesn't ride as much as I do. But maybe when we're riding together, locally, I think she's gonna be using this bike. I think she can handle this bike with no problem, really. It's a very familiar feel to it. The 
hydraulic brakes work very well on this bike. It's a very light pull. You stop very well. You can stop with one finger. I'm just pulling with one finger right now. <laughs> one finger on each brake, lightly. Harder to do with a mechanical brake, but these are um, Tektro hydraulic brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. Well, let's pedal up going this one. We're on pedal assist level four right now out of nine. Let's move it up to five. Yeah, I can feel the kick in right there. And yes, you will do a little bit of ghost pedaling. All right, let's back back down on this. All right, they're trying to resurface this uh, road here, which makes it extremely bumpy now. I'm gonna move forward a little bit. It's very hard to see when cars come by here. I've always said that they needed to put a uh, some type of light assist here. So when uh, when you get up to you push the button, then the light starts blinking. That tells the traffic to stop and let us through. They have that in other places, but they haven't done it to this road. I really feel they need to do that here before somebody gets killed. One clears, the other side doesn't. All right. <laughs> so yeah, I like this bike. I like all my bikes. <laughs> it's true. I don't think there's been too many I didn't really like. There's always something about a bike that uh, stands it out and you know there's good and bad of every bike but I think overall the execution of this Ocelot Pro is pretty good. I'm very familiar with it obviously. The menu is exactly the same as the other uh, bike. I like the fact that this one has cruise control. Front shock is very nice. Yeah, so is there any room for improvement? Yeah. I think I think Magic Cycles should start seriously considering uh, increasing the size of this chain ring. I put a 52T on my uh, Magic Cycle um, cruiser and that helped a lot in terms of pedaling at fast speeds. I know that a lot of times they don't do that for a lot of these bikes because um, they're designed to stay within the 20 mile per hour ranges, but even so, I think it could benefit. We'll see if they take that suggestion I think that's the one thing that many riders have said, not only for Magic Cycle, for uh, other brands as well, that if they just simply increase that to something like 52T, um, it would take care of a lot of the ghost pedaling problems that we all seem to experience on fast, uh, faster rides. We'll also do a range test on this bike, but that'll be done on another video. Right now we're just getting impressions of the bike and uh, how it's doing as, as, a, as a stock bike. I would say overall I'm very happy with the performance of this bike. It feels really good. It feels very familiar to me. Um, the, the way it grabs during uh, the changes within the pedal assist levels is exactly the same as my uh, my Magic Cycle Cruiser. So I, I, feel a, I feel at home on it, really. 
The only difference is, is um, um, being a 20 inch wheel, um, the frame is smaller than, than a cruiser. But I think there's a benefit to that too. You know, if you're a, if you're a, a shorter rider, this would be the bike to get over a cruiser. People's complaint of the cruiser is that it's very large. Uh, it's a mid-step model, but quite frankly, you really can't step over, or can't step through it. Um, that mid-step is really more, more of a cut for, for guys. <laughs> Um, you have a little more clearance right there, but you can't step through it really. You have to tilt it down to step, uh, step through. So uh, if you want a true step through uh, bike, but still has the kind of the performance of the cruiser, this is it, the Ocelot Pro. Yeah. So the Cruiser Pro, compared to the standard cruiser, what, what do you get with the Cruiser Pro? Well, um, you get hydraulic brakes over mechanical brakes. You get a better fork, you get a hydraulic fork versus a spring-loaded fork. You get uh, 20 amp hours of battery versus 15, both of them being 52 volts. You get a little more torque. Uh, the torque is rated at, I believe, 90, what is it, 95 or 96, I keep forgetting, versus uh, 85 or 86. So you get like 10 newton meters more of torque. costs a couple hundred dollars more of course to do that but uh, I think it's worth it I think the, the brakes alone would make it worth it but add in the uh, additional range that you get with a 20 amp hour battery compared to 15 yeah it's well worth it so the price between that model and this model is really not that different so which one should you choose? Here's, here's how I would choose it, if it was me, okay? If I have hip problems, if I have problems uh, swinging my leg over a bike, there's no doubt I would buy the Ocelot Pro. <laughs> if I don't have that problem, I'd probably get the Cruiser Pro, yeah. Now for me, I'm used to the Cruiser, so a Cruiser Pro would be exactly the same thing to me. Um, between the two, which would I buy? Me personally, I'd buy the Cruiser Pro. <laughs> Not to say that this is bad, I'm just saying it's, it's for me, I'm more used to that style. But I'll tell you that this thing has power. This thing has a lot of power. So it's the equal essentially, but in a different style. That's all it is. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, I say this thing's doing pretty good. All right. I'm going to take this onto the street once we get over uh, to the end there, and then we'll call it a day. this way. All right, the tricky part in here is I'm on the crosswalk area, but I'm gonna eventually hit the street. So uh, I've gotta make sure the cars know I'm heading in that direction. All right. Now we're back on the street with them. The hard part too is I don't have a rear view mirror here so I don't know what's behind me. I have to keep looking over my shoulder. All 
I'm throttling fully here. <laughs> Trying to get an idea how fast we can go on this bike. I'm hitting 26 miles an hour right now. 26.8, 28.8. Twenty-eight point five. So what did I say our top speed was? Twenty-eight point five. We're going up a hill right now, doing twenty-six miles an hour roughly. So yeah, this thing caps off at 28. Now some of the other guys were saying they were getting very close to 30 miles per hour, but I think they may have been going down a hill or something, or down a slight incline. Um, Alright. This is going down an incline. It does take a while to get there. It's not an instantaneous. Now there is a radar thing here. I don't know if this is gonna show up on me, but we'll see. 27. So it's saying I'm hitting 27. My speedometer is showing 28. So yeah, we're going pretty fast. Yeah. The limit is set for 28, it gave me 28. According to the radar detector, it gave me 27. Very respectable. Now, these other guys are getting 30. I don't know how they're doing that. <laughs> now, I am a heavier rider. I'm 255 pounds. I'm 5'10". I'm 63 years old. Give you all my stats there. Um, overall, the fact that this bike can, can do what it's doing is impressive. I will say this, although I like my speed when I need it, I don't use it all the time. I'm not one that will be riding at 28 miles per hour all the time. I only do that when I'm on the road with other cars and I need to get off that road as fast as I can, I will speed up to get off the road. I'm more interested in things like uh, torque. How well does it go over hills? Do I have to pedal hard to, to get it moving? That, that type of thing. That's more important to me, as well as um, range. Now the um, the battery on this is a 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery. So there's plenty of uh, power to get you going for some distance. We'll do the range test on this bike. See how it actually does. but we'll do that another day. So let me give you some conclusions here as I head off here. <laughs> let me take a left turn. I'm gonna go up this sidewalk because I wanna to get to this other area. Make sure the car's not turning. There we go. So here's my conclusion of all this. The Ocelot Pro reminds me so much of the Cruiser and Cruiser Pro. It's just a different form of uh, a frame. If you need a step through bike, this is the one to get. If you don't need a step through bike, get the Cruiser Pro. <laughs> All, right. All the other stuff is pretty much the same between the two models, really. It's just, uh, you know, what style do you need? If, if, you're, if you're taller and you don't mind a step over type model, get the Cruiser Pro. You've got two options. You've got, uh, you've got uh, a step over version and a, a mid-step version. If, uh, if you're getting a little bit older like me and uh, maybe you have some hip problems or something like that, step through model makes a lot more sense get the Ocelot Pro. Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, more videos to come, and we'll do a range test and everything on this bike. We'll be using it more often. I'll talk to you guys next time.